So we'll be doing a data interactive session on data analysis. So let me introduce myself. I'm Akhi Roy from Department of Physics uh, in Indian Institute of Technology, Indore. And uh, presently I am working uh, with Alice collaboration. Okay. So before I start the real uh, data analysis through interactive session, so let me give my plan. So since it is the data analysis, so how do we get the data? What are the challenges experimentalist face? So that I will just quickly, I will go through it. And uh, then basically data analysis as an example, here we had taken the how to extract uh, the structure function of proton. Okay. And uh, then we will start how we are going to extract that structure function. First, I will explain and then we'll start the analysis, okay? So when we say that we are doing uh, data analysis, so the, your input is the data, okay? So that data, basically it has a lot of effort has been put before it is uh, stored in your, in the computer, in the storage devices, okay? So, so what are the challenges we face when we go for experiments? Like let's say when you are, doing in theory some calculation, let's say for 200 GeV, okay? And then you are suddenly switching to 2 TeV, okay? For you, maybe just little bit change. For us, it may take, for the experiments, it takes maybe 10 years, 15 years to develop that 200 GeV to 2 TeV, okay? It's a huge effort, okay? And whenever we talk about the, let's say beam, uh, it's basically you have two things. One is the energy and the luminosity, okay? So um, energy means if it is a high energy, you will be having a lot of effort to make it accelerate. There's a lot of challenges. Luminosity, let's say you want to understand a channel or you want to probe a channel which is having a very, very, you know, it's a rare decay channel, okay? So that means cross-section is very low. So how do you analyze that uh, data or that channel? So in that case, one parameter, you cannot change the cross-section, okay? It is the nature given. It's the channel is like that. It's rare, probability is very less. But what you can do as an experimentalist, you can tune or you can make your luminosity better so that you produce large number of events to analyze that data, okay? And then when this, let's say, particles are produced after the collision, then how do you measure the particle? So you have to use some tool. So let's say that is the detector. So whenever you are using a instrument like detector, so along with that, it will be coming its limitation, okay? So it's efficiency involved. So that means if you're, let's say, 100 particles produced, your detector may be able to uh, detect only 70 particles. So that means it is the efficiency, it is a 70% efficient, okay? And acceptance, it's like, ideally we can put detectors in all the places, okay? It is ideally. But if you really want to put the detectors, you need lot of, no, it's a cost uh, involved, okay? So according to your physics requirement, you put your detector. So acceptance is in the limited region. You put your detector in certain region. So acceptance comes into the picture, okay? And then again, when you are measuring, let's say in your case, you are saying that energy is 2 GeV particle, but when we are measuring, it's not exactly as experimentalist, it's not exactly 2 GeV. So detector resolution comes into the picture. So all these things, when you are doing experiments and doing analysis, these uh, things are come, okay? You said, let's say we are um, analyzing or uh, looking for some pa rare particle, let's say Higgs, okay? It's not that Higgs will come and say that I am Higgs, okay? So whenever you try to extract Higgs particle through the energy momentum measurement, so you uh, certainly what will happen with that particles, you will be having lot of backgrounds also. Okay, so you have to do some techniques so that you can do the background rejection. So it's always 
compromise your how you balance your signal and noise ratio okay you have to pay your price here okay and this cross section it is the the probability the way that particles are produced so that i cannot change but the why i have introduced the cross section uh, one thing the way you calculate as a, from the theory point of view the you calculate like you have perturbative qcd calculation you have leading order next to leading order like this you add on keeping add on your vertexes and you vertices and you uh, calculate your cross section okay but the way experimentalist calculate the cross section it's not like that okay so that you need to understand here okay and also any measurement you know already any measurement we do there will come along with the errors okay so any measurements you will be having two mainly two errors if you uh, see some experimental paper you will be seeing there is some value then plus minus something and plus minus something you see most of the time it is a first is statistical error then the systematic error so any measurement you do your error is there okay so as a theoretician when you are looking an experimental paper you should not see only the average value you also see on the how much error involved in that measurements okay so long uh, in, in entire week you have seen we are discussing like measuring cross section in perturbative qcd okay so what you see see that your uh, this work level cross section calculation also is intertwined with the pdf which is measured by the experiments so when you are doing theory you should it's a like a interdependency between the experiment and the theory okay you alone cannot go ahead so understanding the experimental point of view it's very important for a theoretician so you can talk to them you understand their language so you understand the how much error involved in that measurements so it helps you will be a better theoretician if you do the understand the experimental aspects also okay so with this introduction so what we will be trying to do we will try to get the structure function through this deep inelastic scattering you theory you have learnt a many times in this in this school so ep goes to ex so we will do basically this inclusive deep inelastic scattering so that means from the experimental point of view we will measure only the final state electrons okay so it's i kept it very simple so only one particles energy momentum will be involved here in this analysis and <coughs> this kinematic variables you already are very much familiar so your root s is the basically four momentum of the your incident proton and k is the basically your four momentum of the incident electron and uh, then you calculate center of mass energy and virtuality of proton is the incident and scattered electron four momentum difference square and bjorken x all these formula we will be using in our data analysis okay so inelasticity is this and finally q square the momentum transfer equal to x into y into s all this formula this uh, kinematic variables we will be using while data analysis so you can see there could be two method only knowing the in the final state if i know the energy of the scattered electron and the theta scattered angle with this only we can do this analysis okay another thing what we can do we know let's say we know the four momentum of the final state electron that means energy and px py pz so they are also you can do the analysis okay so this is the idea now how do we measure the before we start the analysis so how do we go ahead with that what is the idea so this first formula which you have seen already this is the double differential cross section with x and q square this formula is very much familiar many times it discussed in this school so f2 and fl okay so this is the formula of a cross section now what we will do you know we experiment we can measure the cross section we will do it and then you see i have introduced 
this reduced cross section. What I did here, if you see this 2 pi alpha square by q to the power 4x, I have bring it into the left hand side. Okay. And then it is basically cross section becomes the reduced cross section. Okay. Name we have given sigma r. On the right hand side, you see f2 minus y square by capital Y plus into fl. Okay. Now, this sigma r, where y is this? This is just, we are not going in that details. Now, if you put small y equal to 0 here, what happens? You see it will be remaining only f2. Okay. So, I can do that. We can extrapolate till y equal to 0 and we can get the f2. Okay. So, that is the philosophy behind the analysis. So, we will be doing the analysis, but it, this should keep behind your no, mind that this is the way we will go ahead. Okay. So, we will go for cross section, then reduced cross section, then y equal to 0 that will give me the f2. Okay. Now, if you go back to this formula, if you see, you can think of like your sigma r into this into this. So, if you take this is your let us say x, so you can write sigma r equal to y mx plus c. That means, fl you can take as a slope, is not it? So, with this idea, so I need then to find out the slope, I need the basically if you see here I need two energy. Okay. So, sigma r at one energy, sigma r at two energy, second energy and this, this is this will give me the slope. But if you observe very carefully, x and q square are the same. Okay. So, I will take two root s that will give me the two y1 and y2, okay. but at the same x and q square. So, that will give me the fl. Okay, so, this is the overall idea when we will be going for the direct analysis, this should be your, in your mind. Okay. Yes. Can I make a comment? Yes. This is one of the reasons why EIC needs to run at different centers of mass energy. You remember the 20 to 100 GeV center of mass? This is the principal reason because then we can run for the same x and q square for different y's. Yeah, that is exactly why we are talking about it. Now, I will not focus on any experiment. Okay, so I will say that since we will be using energy and uh, theta angle, scattering angle of theta of electron, final state electron, so we are considering the electron identification. Mainly, what we do. So, for if you want to really measure the momentum, so you should have a tracking detector that will give you the Px, Py, Pz and if you want to measure the energy, you need a calorimeter. Okay. So, calorimeter is very good to measure the energy of electron, positron, also photon. How do you differentiate between photon and E plus E minus? You should have some charge information. If it is neutral, but calorimeter signal is there, then it is a photon you can consider. Or if you have a, some charge uh, information, it is a charge particle and electromagnetic, then you can consider it as an electron. So, I am not going in that details in the data analysis, the, in that uh, story. Okay. Since it is an electron, okay, everywhere you have electrons. Okay. Some hadrons, if it hits your beam pipe, it can give you an electron. Okay, so, that is your background. That is not your real electron which you want. That is not the signal. Okay, that can give you the background. This kind of background can be there. And if you see the our reaction E p goes to E into plus anything x. That x could be any particle that can decay and give you the E plus. Possible. Okay. So, those will be your background, you do not want, you want the particle that 
which is your signal in the final state electron. So it may happen that your final state particle uh, channel will be having more than one electron. Okay, so those, this is a, one of the biggest challenge for the experimentalist that how to reduce the background. Okay, any signal you are looking for, you have to minimize your background. Okay, so there comes the thing. So this I will not go in more details here. Now, you try to understand this part, okay, very well. So how do we measure the cross section? If you see this left hand side, you have already seen, okay. And how experimentalists measure the cross section, okay. So we have some number of particles here electron, which I have measured by using my detector. Now you focus to the denominator. So we have A into epsilon, okay. So A is acceptance, epsilon is the efficiency of the detector, okay. So as I give you the example, there will be 100 electrons, but I am able to only detect 70. That means it is 70% efficient, okay. So I know very well that my detector is 70% efficient through the calibration I know. When it is detecting some amount of particles with that efficiency only, with 70% efficiency, but the nature, that is the 100% I need. Isn't it? For my calculation, whatever nature has produced, I want to know that. Okay, so I have to do this efficiency correction. Okay, my detector has some limitation, but I have to overcome that limitation knowing its limitation. I know it is 70% electron. So if it is giving this much of electrons, that means it is with the 70% efficiency it has measured. What will be the 100%? As simple as that. I know acceptance of my detector. So I will do that correction also, similarly, okay. Now this is the L, this is the integrated luminosity, okay. So uh, I will write a formula here, then it will be clear to you. So in some events equal to L int dot sigma. So if this is the cross section, production cross section, this is the luminosity which using which I am measuring my number of particles, the detail, your accelerator is, the, is having this luminosity, okay. So if it is a very rare cross section is very less, I should have very good luminosity so that my number of events, I get large number of events and I can get a better signal, okay. So that doesn't mean that I in, uh, increase large number of large luminosity, number of events are more, that should not change my sigma, okay. So I have to unbias my data by the luminosity also, okay. It should not be, so it should be divided by that term, okay, luminosity. and. Here, if you see in the right hand side, that is the delta x, delta q square. That is a width of x and q square, okay. So this I will explain it to you later as well. But for quick uh, these things, what we will do experimentally, we will plot this x versus q square, okay, for each particle or from the each event, every event. Then, I will do in this histogram, what I will do be doing, we will slice the entire data like this. Got my point? For this is my delta x and this is by delta q square. I will grid huh? each entire data, I will divide into small, small grids. And then that is, is basically your, this number, here it is basically your n raw. Got the point? That number, so if I take delta x large, I will get more number of particles. If we put delta k square large, it will be more. 
So that should not be my cross section should not biased by that grid width. No, so I have to unbias it. Okay, so that's the idea. First, we will get the raw number uh, n number which is measured by the detector. Then I will do this all this correction and then I will get the cross section. Okay, then. Okay. okay, now you got the idea how we are going to do the data analysis, the thing is clear. Now what we have done here, I have done here, so I have used Pythia which is a basically event Monte Carlo event generator which is uh, do the all these processes according to the perturbative QCD, it can produce the PP collision data as well as EP. Okay, so I have used that Pythia 8 event generator which is basically by, by I am using it as a mock data, okay, treating as a data. And then I have used two data sets I have produced. I explained why I need the two data set. And then that data I have saved in a root file and then we, are, we will be doing the root data analysis, okay. So this is the introduction about my, about my, uh, this interactive session. Now I have shared with you one folder you have downloaded. So how many of you already installed root? Please raise your hand. Okay. Okay. So if you and any of you have not done it, so kindly share, sit with someone who has already done it so that at least you can see what is happening. Okay. And how, uh, just one more question, how many of you are familiar with the programming, any programming? Okay. All of you. Okay, then it's very good. Now let me start with the our real interactive session. Okay. Okay. So if you go to that folder which I have used, you check there are two dot root files. Okay. So ep underscore this. You can see ep underscore this underscore test one 225 gv dot root and another is 318 gv dot root. So this I will be treating as my data. Okay, let's open that file. How do I open that file? So I have to write root root minus l and then the file name. Okay. So, let us see what is there inside that file. You can also open along with me, okay. So this is the 318 GB file, okay. Now you see this root has very beautiful feature, okay. So it can save entire data it is called, the structure is called tree, T tree format, okay. So what I have for the, I will be doing only with the electron, final state electron, okay. So I, if you see in the left hand side, I have tree like uh, this leaf, tree has leaf, okay. So one leaf is E, another is Px, another is Py, another is Pz and other than that I have also saved the angle information, okay. So this is my input data. So just one quick comment. So here data, what is the advantage in this tree? You can read column wise, okay. You can the entire px just through the column. So that is the advantage compared to the, if you save in a data file, you have to go all the information from left to right and then you come back again to your column, okay. So advantage with the tree, you can get the column information without reading the entire file, okay. So this is my input file. Let us click to one of them. So it is a huge file, it is not open, okay. So you can see something is there. So this is my input file, okay. You can click and check what is there. So uh, my information is energy and three momentum component, Px, Py and Pz, 
Now, I will be, I will request you to open that energy scat electron dot c file. Open that file. So, you, you use any editor, whatever you want. Okay, so this is my first file where what I will be doing, I will take that root file as an input. Okay, so if you see here, is it visible? Can you see this file or should I make it bigger? It's not showing here. Yes, come to the front side. Yes, also you can open, I have shared this file with you. You open uh, that file. You can see then I will go one by one. Yes. Is it visible now? It's okay? Yes. So, if you see here, I will explain little bit. You do not, if you don't understand root, don't worry. Just get the idea what is happening. Okay. Syntax is not important. Okay. So, if you see, this is the T file and this is the input file which I had shown you just now. Okay, so I, and you see this is read. So I am reading this root file. Okay, and the tree which is saved inside this root file is the name, this name, s underscore e info. So I am getting that. So this is my file one. File one is the object of this t file, and I am extracting, getting this information from that file one to this tree. Okay, I am defining this. I am bringing the information from that file to this program. Okay. And then I am defining to, you can say storage vector. Here it's basically storage. You understand the array? Array concept, if you understand programming, it's an array basically. Array, you have to define the dimension. That is the limitation of array. Here, vector, it is designed in such a way that you do not have to define the dimension. You can store data as much as possible. Okay. So, I have defined those two vectors for energy and angle. Okay. So, this is my, I am taking only energy and angle information here for the first analysis, okay? And I am send, uh, setting the address of that. So you, it, this is little bit technical. So I am the in computer, basically whenever data is stored, so each storage has a address, okay? So I am through that address, I am set the ampersand E means basically the address of that energy information and the angle information, okay? So I am taking that one. 
Now in that tree, so this small t and here t, I am taking the entries. How many entries are there? Entries here means how many events I have stored there. So that is important. Okay. Why important? I will tell you. Now you go through your um, Now, if you see here it is this for k equal to 0, k less than entries, k plus plus. What does it mean? So, the data which is stored in my root file, it is event by event. Okay? For each event, there is information, energy and momentum of the electrons. So, for event by event, all the information are stored. Okay? So, analysis, whatever I will be doing, it will be event by event. Okay? So that means I have to run the same thing, whatever analysis I am do doing again and again for each event. So that's why this for loop is coming into the picture. So k equal to 0, it will do the analysis. Then it will go to the k equal to 1, it will do the same for the next event, k equal to 2. So like this, it will go through each and every event and do the analysis. That's the idea. Analysis is for each and every event. You understand event means what? Okay. Now, this Lorentz vector con uh, concept I will come later. So, I have defined two variables which is energy scat electron and theta scat electron. Okay. Here, in this energy scattering electron and theta scat electron, I have stored this E and angle. Okay, now if you see here L, so here basically another for loop you can see. So in one event as I said, it can be more than one electron. I don't know which electron is the scattered electron. So I have to read all the electrons. Okay, so this is the size basically how many electrons are all the electrons even I am running for each event. One event can be more than one electron. So that is also I am looping. Okay. Now I want to, I have data in a root file that is a data file. Now I need to visualize it. Okay. I have to plot a graph or histogram. Okay. So there is this special way where you can save your or you can define your histogram in a root. So if you see, so TH1F, so it is the one dimensional histogram and these are some name of that histogram, don't go in that details and this is the object, I am defining two object of this one dimensional TH1F class, okay. So one is for storing energy information another is for storing the theta information. Okay, I want to visualize how my energy and theta looks like, whatever I have collected. Now, these three, three numbers are very important here. Okay, so uh, first is the, let me go to the second and third first. So, this is the range of your variable or observable which you want to study. So, I, energy information, energy is going, I am defining it is from 0 to 30. Angle, you can understand very easily 0 to 180 degree. Theta, 0 to 180. What is this first number? So, it is as I said here, no? let us say you have one information, angle information 0 to 180. This is my theta. And how you want to divide bin? You can go very finer. So you increase that number. If you don't want that finer, you reduce that number. How you are segregating your entire energy and theta information, your histogram. Okay, that's the idea. So according to your requirement, this number you can change. Okay. Now I have defined my histogram. Now, I will, this histogram, I 
I have to store the information. So I have to feel. See, it's like almost like our English language. No, you have defined. Now you are feeling with the input. So you are feeling energy scattered electron and theta scattered electron. These two information you have filled. Now you see here, east energy. Don't go by each and everything. We, in two hours, we can't do that thing. Just understand the philosophy. Okay. So heat energy draw. So I have filled, and then I am want to draw that information. That's the idea. Okay. So now if I close this, how do I run this macro? So I have to write in my terminal command line root minus l, and then the file name energy scat electron dot c, and you put enter. It will take. Little bit time, so if you don't want to run it for long time, there is a way out. So, see one, you will get two histogram. Is it visible? Can you uh, just do it in your uh, laptop and see whether you are able to see that? That means your root is working. It's a test. Okay, so this is your theta distribution. What I can do just to see it clearly, I can put the y-axis that set log y. See? Okay, I will come to this. And let me go to the energy information as well. See? Okay, so whether you are getting it or not, just confirm. Then I will go to the next step. Anyone is having any problem to understand what I explained till now? It's okay. Now, what I will do? You can see in the low energy. At zero, around zero, there is a peak-like structure. No, little bit up. Okay, I do not have very uh, much scope to tell you about the background this thing, but this through small these things, I will explain how do you, you can study. So this is the all electrons. Okay, so it is like a mixing of your signal and background, everything. Okay, now to understand your this. Electrons uh, energy spectra. What is this bump? What is this in the low side? Okay, so I for that I just to give you a flavor that how if there is some kind of uh, anomaly in your spectra, so you have to go back to your simulation. So when you are doing data analysis, so parallelly we we are having also simulation package. Okay, so generally what happened? It is like a virtual experiment. Your entire detector setup you have with your root, GN4, your event generator. It's like you are doing virtually some experiment. Okay, so we have to use that simulation package and see what is the source of this kind of behavior. What we have to understand the spectra like. So for that, I will give a small flavor of it. So any of you, you are getting this spectra or not? One of you just tell yes or no. Okay, now I will just go for the another. Um, so this dot C file, it's generally typical language. We say macro. Okay, so you, if you see in that same folder, there is one simulation background electron dot C. Okay. So before going for this, uh, telling you about that source of this, what is the source of that uh, no, low side, no, peak kind of structure in the energy uh, spectra. So before that, let's say in the earlier uh, macro, what we did, we have taken only energy and theta information. Let's say in my experiment, one of my experiment, I have measured energy and momentum both. Okay, so I have. 
for momentum information, energy momentum information. Actually, that is good, good enough to do your study other than your about the charge status, whether it is a positive or neutral or the negative charge. Okay, energy and momentum information is complete information about if you want to do the study. Okay, so there is already a defined uh, structure, I would say, that is called T Lorentz vector in root, using which you can define your Lorentz vector. Okay, T Lorentz vector. So if you see what I did, I have written T Lorentz vector scat electron. Okay, so I have defined one uh, um, observable of the T Lorentz vector class. Now, if you see in this line, it's all this for loop, everything I have already explained to you. Now, if you go to the scat electron, then I am writing dot set px, py, pz, e. And within the bracket, you see I have given the information of px, py, pz, and e from my root file, input root file. Already I explained to you in the, I have showed, I have showed you that data means I have three leap, four leaps, isn't it? Energy, px, py, pz, okay? So those information I have first bring it here in my file from this root file. You can see the same file I am reading here. And here in spite of E and angle, I have also defined px, py, pz. So I am taking this four information from my input data. Okay. And I am filling this information in this set px, py, pz, e. What does it mean? So root is a basically data analysis framework. It's a framework. Everything is ready. You put your input and do the analysis. So T Lorentz vector will take care of all your T Lorentz vector, uh, no addition, subtraction, multiplication, whatever you do. That framework is ready. You give your input. So that input you can see I have given from my root file. This is px, py, pz and e. So I have fed to that framework this input information, okay? Now, in spite of doing directly theta, I have not used anywhere theta information from the root file. And what I claimed that T Lorentz vector is good enough to do the whatever study you want to do with your that particle. Okay, once you have the four vector, you have all the information except the charging status. Okay, so what you do? You have this cat electron. This is your T Lorentz vector for scattered electron. So it is ready. I have given all the information, free momentum and energy information. I have given it. It is ready with that. Now I am asking that, okay, give me that dot E. What is the energy information? So I have to write just dot E. It will give me the information. I have to write, if I have to get the theta, this is dot theta. See? I have written dot theta and if you understand what is this factor 180 by 3.14. So this theta is given is basically in radian. Okay. So I have to convert it into degree. So I am multiplying by 180 by 3.14. Okay. Now what I said that I will be now telling you about the the what is the bump at the lower side, okay? So, what I did, I have this size, as I said, in final state, I ideally expect only one electron, but there may be more than one electron. Okay, let's do that study. I have written here one histogram, if electron size is only one, then you plot the energy information, okay? And when the electron information is more than one, size is more than one, then you draw another histogram, H1A, okay? So I am splitting, I, earlier I had an entire spectra. Now I am, in simulation, I am doing microanalysis. When there is only one electron, 
what should be my spectra when it is more than one electron, how it looks like. Okay. Then let's go back and just plot uh, this one and then I will we'll come back again. So, So, if I maybe I remove this one first, only I will show only one. Only one electron. Only one histogram first I will show and then I will go to the all. See, if you remember earlier when I was filling all the information that lower side you had a one little bit rise when I am plotting only one electron, size is only electron that part is not there. That means the contribution, the events which are having more than one electron they are producing this kind of rise, okay. Let us see. So this is, I am as if I am doing the, my data analysis, okay. Now I will plot only simulation. So I am, I will plot only when you have a size is greater than one. Size is E dot size, size greater than one. When you have more than one electron in your final state. Now again I will draw and you check. It is not saved. No, hmm. So every time any change you do, you have to basically save it, okay? Otherwise it will not uh, do the work. See, here what I have done, I have taken only those events which are having more than one electron. And you see the load side, lower side that rise in this. So any abnormality in your spectra, you have to do a simulation and see why it is coming like that, okay. So you can treat it like a, what happened if you have a electron from E, P goes to E X and one of the hadron decays to electron. So that electron will be in low energy compared to the scattered electron. So those are giving you that. Yeah. So what I can do? I don't want those are not my signal. Those are I am not interested in that. So I can put a cut that energy should be greater than 6 GeV. Okay. And in the same event, it is I have taken more than one. So I am not throwing out the events actually. I am not analyzing or considering low energy electron as my scattered electron. This still you have this blue line here, okay. So to 
reduce this low energy electron or throw this out from my analysis, I have to put a cut. Okay. So, all these conditions, all the cuts comes basically, you want to reduce your background and you want to, so it is a basically, you know, you have to optimize, okay. You cannot throw, you cannot throw all the backgrounds, at the same time you also need maximum signal. So, it is a, basically you have to optimize your signal to background ratio, okay. So, here, what I will be doing in the analysis, if you see, here, for I will be taking, if you see my cursor position, I have written scattered energy is greater than 6, then only you do take those electrons. So, I have thrown those low energy electrons, okay, below 6 won't come inside this, okay. And you see another end I have written, theta scattered electron less than 158. So, this also I am keeping as an example, let us go to this theta information, okay, then you will understand. this is after cut or something I have to check. I think this one is after cut. If you remember, yes, this is after cut. I should not show you before this. Let us say I, I am showing you the original plot. See, let us say my detector in this along this backward direction, I have some beam pipe and there is no detector, okay. So, I know there should not come any signal information but something is there in the rise. So, I am confident I do not have that, uh, that detector in that region. So, I can put my cut that theta should be greater than some 160 degree according to the place where you place the, your detector. So, that is the way you can throw out your information. So, which is your basically not coming from your detector. Somehow, it has there, it is there in your uh, root file. So, what I did in the simulation, so I have now to reduce background, I have used two cuts, okay. One is energy should be greater than 6 and angle should be less than 158 degree, okay. Then this is my spectra, okay. So, the experimentalists do this kind of study and see where is the background and what kind of cut I can apply so that I can reduce the background. This is just one small example, okay. So, before I move to the next step, what I will request, just one small homework, everything is there. So, I have plotted in the simulation background that macro theta. Can you plot phi or momentum, any one, whatever you feel easy, just follow that and show me that you can, theta is there, so you follow how I have plotted the theta information. Similarly, you try to just draw the phi information of the scattered electron. I will give you five minutes.
this is uh, simulation background electron dot c it's not there simulation background electron dot c there just follow the theta and plot the phi or momentum whatever you want So follow the theta plot, you will be able to do it. <coughs> so what is the uh, way? So fast. You want to plot it in a histogram, so you have to define a histogram. Okay, see that which one is your theta exactly like that way you do. So define some, let's say H5. Second line you see TH1F theta. Similarly, you do it for phi.
anyone could do it Mm-hmm. Condition, you do not have to put condition, just dot phi and plot it. Don't put any condition. Anyone able to do it? Okay. So what did you get? Yes. So I will wait for one or two. Please try. Then you will get, uh, no, you will be confident that I can do it. Simple, but just do it once. Got it? Yes. Yes, you have very good. So two of you could uh, do it. Till now I am not uh, able to complete. You are learning very fast. Let's see. Anyone else? Hi. Huh? Done? How is it looks like? Okay. No, I can't see. Small homework, but see, my binning is very bad. See, it's a uniform distribution. In phi, it's a uniform. There is no biasing. Uniformly distributed, your events. Hmm? Okay. Good. So, so now, oh, 
Okay. So anyone needs any help? Pardon? So whoever already completed, please help others. In experiment, we always collaborate, okay? So you collaborate, try to help others. If you can, if you complete, then you will get tea. Okay, otherwise no tea. Such a simple thing. Done? Okay, let me explain then. Then we can go for T. See, I have defined here one histogram. Only I have copied this theta histogram and changed everything, name H5, see? And only thing I change this 360 because 2 pi, phi distribution is 2 pi, so I have changed it to 360. Then I have defined a variable phi scattered electron. Basically where I will be storing my information. Now from the T Lorentz vector, scattered electron, see scat electron, which I have already defined, I just wrote dot phi. So generally root gives you in radian. So I want to see, visualize it in degree. Okay, that is, no, we are more comfortable in that. So then I have converted it to degree by this factor. 180 by 3.14. See, that I named as a phi scat electron. Once I did, then I have filled that information event by event. So everything in is in a loop. Don't, so ev each event I am getting the phi information and storing in this, filling in this H5. Okay, now feet is filled. Now I have to draw. I have defined a new canvas where I want to do the draw and then H5 draw. It's done. Four, five lines. I was doing 360 by 1. 3.2 pi, uh, yeah. pi equal to that. Okay. So now it is okay. Now in the after T, we will go for kinematics. Huh? X, Y, all this information we will plot and then we'll go for our structure function. 